Hi, my name is Shannon Hall. I am going to be 42 this year. I'm a stay-at-home mom right now. I lost my sister to domestic violence in 2004. Um, Shannon, we appreciate your time and, and really thank you for opening up to us and helping uh, share all of this with so many other people. I'm just going to ask right now if you can help us uh, understand who your sister was, not what's happened to her, but who she was before all this. Okay, um, I'm going to tell you a story that happened, the best, that's my favorite story about my sister. My daughter Paige was little, she was maybe three years old. Me, my sister, and my mom were in Walmart, and Paige has a bad habit of not paying attention where she's walking and bumps into stuff all the time. So we're walking in the store and Paige wanted to not be in a car, so I let her walk. So we're walking and she bumps into this lady, I mean right smack in her butt. So she falls back on her butt. She's okay, but I tell her, I said, Paige, and I'm going through and telling her, I'm like, Paige, what did I tell you? I told you to watch where you're going. So this lady says something under her breath, and I really didn't pay much attention to it. It's because I'm still talking to Paige, being annoyed that she ran up this lady's butt, basically. And my sister just starts yelling at this woman, telling her she's going to drag her out by the head of her hair and beat her butt in the Walmart parking lot if she talks to her sister like this. By then, this lady's getting real mad. And she says, I told you, don't be talking to me like that. So my sister starts yelling at her more. My mom comes around in the corner and she's like, oh my God, I can't believe what happened. And my mom's like, what happened? I said, Paige ran to someone's butt. I said, I guess the lady said something she didn't like, Mary didn't like, and Mary took her, told her she's gonna kick her butt, that no one can talk to her sister like that. Um, I've gone to these silent witness things and people talk about the people they've lost and it's always something, no matter how bad this person was, it's always good stuff. My favorite thing about my sister is that she didn't take crap from anybody and she would tell you right to your face. Okay, Shannon, we're going to now take a look at uh, the time frame before uh, the event of loss. I just want to maybe get a kind of a mindset for where your family was and, and things that were going on with the family maybe overall. If, uh, if you feel comfortable in sharing this with us, um, if you'd like to. Okay, um, my sister had, two months before my sister died, she had a baby. She was in the hospital for three months before then because her water broke and so she was pretty much confined and if anybody knew my sister, that wasn't a good thing because she just didn't like that. Um, she turned 24 the month before it happened. We had a big family get together. Even my mom was there and my parents had been divorced for a while. It just, everything seemed like an every ordinary thing. I talked to my sister on the phone every day. She asked me all the questions about the baby and you know, what to be, to do. And looking back now, she even asked me a question about if Scott had gotten jealous when I had Tommy and you know, you read all the books and they say, well, yeah, they do a little bit. I didn't think nothing of it. I really wish I would have thought a lot about that then, but but everything seemed fine. She um, was home, they had the baby, they seemed to be doing pretty good. Shannon, you've shared a little bit about your sister and a little bit about your family life, um, especially around the, the time frame that we're looking at. Looking back now, since you've shared with us that this was a, a, a domestic uh, violence related issue, would you feel comfortable in sharing with us maybe, uh, as you look back now, if there were any warning signs that maybe at the time frame you realized you didn't pick up on, but now thinking back, uh, maybe really show themselves something that others may want to look for as well uh, in situations where their family members may be in, in, in similar situations? Warning signs. I've thought a lot about this. Um, I really to think back of all the times you think you see in the newspaper about these women getting abused. I never thought my sister would be the one being the abused person. I thought if it was ever, she would be the one doing it. 
Um, thinking back, there were times when they argued, but they just had a baby, and you're stressed out, and your hormones are in a rage, and she talks to you that he's being a jerk. You don't really think nothing of it because she just he's being a jerk. He's you know he's not helping with the baby. It's something all husbands do. I think I have a great husband, and there's times that he gets on my nerves too. So I, as much as I like to think there was warning signs or something I could have done, I know that there isn't. Shannon, I know you've shared so much with us already about your sister. Um, now, unfortunately, we come down to, to the tougher questions. Um, with this one, I'm going to ask if maybe you could find it within yourself and, and the strength within yourself to maybe share with us the story of your sister's passing uh, and the events that you only feel comfortable in sharing. Okay. I remember it very good. It was August 19th. It was in the middle of all the hurricanes in 2004. I remember it raining and I having to go pick Paige up from the bus stop in a car because it was just nasty outside. I remember looking at, as I walked out the door, looking at the news and she lived in Rockledge and over Rockledge they had a big black spot on the map saying it was really bad. I'm thinking, oh, I have to call my sister when I get back and make sure she's okay because it's right where she's at. I go down the bus stop, wait extra long because the bus is taking a long time. I go back, I get home, I call my sister, no one answers the phone. Message machine didn't come on, so I'm just assuming, well, maybe the electricity went out there. She wasn't the type sometimes to call right back anyway. Plus, she had a new baby, so things were really, real hectic for her. So I am go out later and I'm helping Paige with her homework, getting her ready for bed. And I get a call from my mom and my mom works the second shift so I know she's at work and I'm finding it kind of odd. And then she told me that the Rockledge Police Department came up to her to where she worked and told, me, and told her that Mary was dead and I think RC did it. I don't know how to how I felt. I was kind of like numb. I tell my mom wasn't doing a good job. I couldn't. I felt like I had to be the strong one. I just I called my husband at work. He was working. He was closing, so I had to call him. Couldn't even breathe when I was talking to him. He barely understood a word I said, but he left. He came home. The next couple of weeks were a big blur. I guess it's good that the hurricane had come and we were going through all the hurricanes. Just kept me have something else to think about and I didn't have to see it on the news every two seconds. I was thinking what happens to my nephew? What do we do? I just, I didn't know how to act or how to feel. I was thinking this whole thing wasn't real, that I was going to call her and she was going to show up. I didn't know what happened. I was trying to figure out what happened to my nephew. Found out he was going to stay with my dad and his wife. We just, it was just crazy. I miss, I was missing work. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. Found out. My mom wasn't dealing very good, wasn't able to deal with any of this. So my dad, he's had problems in the past and he wasn't dealing with it. He was just going out of his head. So me and my husband and my friend Candy had to go to the house where she was murdered and get the stuff for Gavin, which is her son. I didn't last very long there. I felt really like I was going to throw up the whole time. I felt like I could feel it in my throat. I just didn't want to be there. There was still all the stuff from the fingerprint stuff on the wall from the police were doing their investigation. And then my dad showed up and he just made things worse. I had to wind up calling the police department to come because he was threatening telling me that it should have been me that died. Domestic violence is an awful thing.
it's not good to know that you have to deal with stuff like that when either one of your parents can do it. They're the ones you're supposed to rely on. I couldn't rely on my mom. She was in pieces. We wound up getting all the stuff for Gavin and Scott took it to my dad and his wife's house. He wound up having to have a police escort. We went home. I can't really, the rest of the time was a big blur. Scott told me I was very fixated on stuff. Um, we had to go to the funeral home to make arrangements for her. My mom was no good at, she was there. I was only 34. I'm not supposed to be planning someone's funeral or writing an obituary. It wasn't my, she wasn't supposed to die. I was older than her. She's supposed to, she just had a baby. This was all not supposed to happen. I wound up having to plan everything. I am so thankful that, that we knew the people that owned the funeral home because she, the lady, June, was so helpful to me. I didn't know what else to do. She knew the kind of the history with my dad, so she knew how that was going to go. We were at the funeral home plan of my sister's funeral. My dad and his wife were at court to get custody of my nephew, telling them that nobody else wanted them. That's a whole nother story. I remember after I was done and the funeral announcement came out in the paper, my dad's wife called me and complained to me that I didn't put her kids in the obit. I didn't even put my own kids in the obit. You forget things like that. You have to be, you have to go out and buy clothes for your person. She had marks on her neck. I had to buy a scarf. My sister never wore anything that was about behind her neck. You don't want to feel the way you do or have to take control of everything, but you do. And nobody understands how you feel. It's been eight years since my sister died, but I had to go through a trial where they don't tell you People that are on trial the ones to get all the rights. The ones the family and their survivors don't. They give up the right to speedy trial. It took almost five years for it to go to trial. Thankfully, he got life without parole. But this those five more years we had to live it out. And you find out things in court that you really didn't want to know. Like you know she died and you know how she died, but you really don't know how until the state attorney gets up there and he makes hand motions of what happened to her or they pass the pictures around and as much as you try to look away, sometimes you just can't help it. I've learned that people try to be nice to you and tell you that they're in a better place. Well, that doesn't make you feel better. Because, you know, if there's a better place, I'd rather them just be in this shitty place with me. You find out who your friends really are, and you find out people you thought were your friends aren't your friends. You learn that you become, and sometimes you become a mean person, or you just don't want to do things. And your friends understand, but there's those people you thought were your friends, and they don't. I thank my husband every day, because... If we were ever going to get divorced, it would have been then. I was nasty and mean. And I just wanted somebody else to feel the way I did, but they don't. I went to counseling. I even did the therapy thing for the um, homicide victims. And the whole time I thought there, I was in there. There was two gangbangers families. A lady whose husband died in a car accident and a guy whose brother had died during a heart attack. All I could think the whole time was, these people don't know how I feel. 
gangbangers, why should I feel bad for them? The lady whose husband was in a car accident and the people left to see the accident, it's not like they meant to do that to them. Maybe they did or messing around, but it was an accident. It was an act car accident. The guy whose brother died, he died of a, he was hit by a car. He was old. And they said he had a heart attack before he was hit by the car. I couldn't understand why I was in a place with these people. It wasn't the same. Okay, Shannon, you've already started to allude and talk to us a little bit about it. When we find ourselves in a situation like this, we like to think friends and family are there to provide positive support networks to really help us make it through these times that each and every one of us experience, whether untimely or as a result of natural causes. Would you like to share with us uh, uh, the supports that you felt were in place that provided positive or negative uh, negative feedback to you why you were going through this time frame? Okay. Um, first of all, I want to thank my husband. Um, he was really there for me. I don't think he knew how to be there for me, and he wasn't really right there for me the way I needed him to be there, but nobody knows what you're going through, and he did the best he could. I had friends that were there. My friend Victoria was there. She told me that it's okay if I'm mean and nasty because she was still my friend and she understood how I felt. Um, I thought, I was hoping my mom would be there, but it was her daughter, so I can understand why. My dad was a whole other story. He didn't even understand why I would be upset. It was his daughter. It was, she was only my sister. Like, oh well. You have friends, you go through times, you just, they want you to do things and you don't want to do it. And you have friends that get mad at you because you don't want to go do something, telling you're being a killjoy. That's just what that is then. Yeah, there's really, I don't know any people that went through what I went through. I mean, they've lost friends and they can understand a little. I got, I where if someone else told me they knew how I felt, I was going to smack them. Because I really don't think anybody really knows how you feel, even if they go through the same thing you went through. Because everybody deals with it different. I've learned that when you lose somebody, or when you know someone that loses somebody, you don't tell them. You just tell them that you'll be there for them no matter what. You don't tell them you know how they feel, because you really don't. All right, Shannon, in, we're now uh, reaching the end of all of this. I would just like to take a couple moments and in closing ask you if you had any words of advice for others who may be going through the loss of a loved one, regardless of circumstance, um, anything you would recommend or, or definitely advise that helped you make it through this difficult time frame. Well, I tried a lot of different things. I went to therapy, I did personal and group therapy, I went to different organizations for domestic violence. Um, I talked to my husband, my friends. I don't even know if some of that helped me, but you should try and do whatever you can. If it's available, try it. If you don't like it, you don't have to go back. I didn't go back to the group thing. I didn't feel comfortable there. I didn't feel like it had anything to do with me, but I tried and just understand that you're not the only one that's going through this thing, that you're not feeling this way, that no matter what you go through, someone can go through the same thing and they don't have the same feelings as you. I want to say you get a, you get a new normal. You get you watch TV, you hear, I, li I like listening to music, I get a lot of strength from different songs I hear, I think of my sister now, and I think of good times. Just do whatever you can. Talk to people. Try it. It, it can't hurt, and if you don't like it, don't do it. But all you can do is just re realize that you're not the only way feeling this way, and you get a new normal. 
it's not that normal that you used to have. But it just, it just changes. Shannon, I just want to thank you for sharing your story and all with us today. And uh, we do appreciate it.